G'day guys, I'm back. I thought I'd do another uh, another talk in the car here on the way into the clinic. And this one all spurned or spawned, I guess, off the back of uh, late last night. I was flicking through the TV channels looking for uh, something to put on while I was eating some dinner. And of course, as usual, stumbled across the, uh, the shopping network. And there was a thing on that which was, well, at first I thought it was hilarious, but then realized kind of how sad it was, which is something called a pain eraser. I'd never seen it before. It looked more like something that you'd, uh, you'd probably purchase off some type of adult website or, or something like that, with the combination of what appeared to be a uh, like a spring-loaded clicker or, or something like that on the end. And, I'll, uh, I'll post some pictures of it afterwards. But basically what it is, is you know this magical tool that it didn't matter what type of pain you had, whether or not you had elbow pain or knee pain or back pain, all you had to do was kind of click away with this, uh, with this thing on your pain and somehow your pain would be gone, which is, you know, which is a miracle. And you know, gosh, gonna put us out of, uh, put us out of business in many ways. But uh, the thing that it got me thinking was, God, there's just so many gimmicks in, in what we do and it makes us, it just so difficult for us as uh, healthcare professionals to be able to look after people when there's so much conflicting information out there. Now, here's the problem. The problem is that pain, as we know, I mean, we've learnt more about pain in the last five years than the 500 years preceding it. It's... A really really complicated thing but it's designed to be really helpful it's supposed to be there to actually look after us and make sure that we don't do something stupid uh, you know that could actually limit our chances of survival uh, you know and uh, and help us continue to I guess procreate and do the things that humans are supposed to supposed to be designed to do um, the only other problem with that as well is because it is so complicated not only does that mean that, uh, you know, it, pain and, and the way in which it works, it doesn't always necessarily relate to damage and it means that often there isn't necessarily a simple fix, but what that can do on the flip side is it can mean that things like these gimmicks, depending on, uh, you know, how well they're sold and how well we believe in them, uh, actually might also have a positive effect, which is, as we know, you know, uh, often described as that kind of placebo effect in many ways. The problem though becomes is if we get hooked on these things or if people are always then looking for these quick fixes that are always being sold to them, then we don't get to make that long lasting change in terms of someone's uh, condition. And the amount of times that patients come into our clinic and they've been told something like, you know, they've got to have this treatment using some type of uh, some type of tool that's going to, you know, push something back into place or kind of, you know, vibrate this part of their body until, you know, it's fixed and, and it all kind of works better. I mean, we just see it all the time. And the, and the problem is then it just means that our job is to actually try and work in terms of re-educating people. And we have to work against that, not only against potentially other health and fitness professionals, but also, uh, you know, against, I guess, a lot of the marketing spin that's out there, like the pain eraser as well. So, I mean, the thing that I really wanted to get across then today, just having the opportunity once again in the car, which is seemingly a really great place to, um, to have a chat to the world uh, by the looks of things, is that, once again, there aren't often any quick fixes in the things that we do. The things that we find at the Injury Rehab Centre in particular is that often any real injury or anything like that occurs really simply. There's only, there's only kind of one scenario really in which it occurs. And basically what happens is that there's too much stress and strain, there's too much force for actually what you can tolerate and what you can work with, right? Now that can either happen really, really quickly and you might tear a muscle, you might break a bone, something like that or it kind of happens a bit more subtly and, and a little bit of a lower level for an extended period of time that's where a lot of those repetitive stress type issues might occur now that might be you know some of that uh, kind of muscle or back pain that's kind of lingering
in for a period of time. It's not like you've actually done an injury so much, but it just kind of aches and it just hurts. Or it might be something like one of those repetitive uh, tendon injuries that we see in a lot of the running clients that uh, come into the clinic who develop those kind of Achilles tendinopathies or patella tendon pain, that type of thing too. So, I mean, they're realistically the only ways in which uh, actual kind of injuries and pathologies um, occur in many ways. And so that's why, you know, at our clinic in particular, we really focus on assessing uh, particularly things like what's your capacity for flexibility, what's your capacity for strength, what's your capacity for power, uh, you know, transfer fur and, and, uh, and absorption of forces, things like that. Because unless we know what you've got in terms of that, how can we possibly work out what you need to be able to overcome uh, whatever it is that's causing that injury there. Beyond that, if it's a pain that, or, or something that kind of lingers longer than that, that's where then it starts getting a bit more uh, complicated and particularly when we're starting to look at those kind of chronic pains or pain in which there isn't necessarily a great physi or physical reasoning or physiological reasoning uh, as to why it's kind of still there and that protection from pain is still occurring. That's where uh, things can get a bit more confident, uh, complicated and it's really about trying to re-establish, I guess, movement confidence and often, once again, it, it's not going to be some type of gimmicky tool that's going to fix this. It's not going to, uh, you know, it's not going to be the cure long-lasting, particularly something that you click around your elbow or, or something like that. It's going to be a case of actually getting you moving, getting you doing things, starting to, I guess, reduce the threat of certain movements, certain situations and things like that. But once again, that's probably a conversation for a much longer drive. I'd say that's probably uh, a conversation for a drive to, to Frankston or maybe uh, maybe Mount Buller at the moment if uh, the snow kind of holds up. We could, uh, we could probably talk for that entire drive on the way there. So anyway, that's my little rant for this morning. Uh, let's get rid of the gimmicks in healthcare. All right, and if we're not involved in healthcare and you're just watching this as, you know, as a punter, kind of as part of the general public, don't buy into the media's spin. It's just causing a lot of problems for us as um, health and fitness professionals as well. So if you do have an issue, make sure you contact someone who actually has a clue. Don't, uh, don't go looking for the quick fix because well, if it's too good to be true, it probably is in many ways. All right, guys, that's me done. Uh, have a safe and happy uh, weekend coming up to the end of the week, uh, particularly if you're going up to the snow. We've had a bunch of uh, ACL injuries in, uh, in recent times from people going up there, so be safe if, you, if you're heading up uh, that way. All right, guys. Ciao.